right, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to day two of Code Day. Um, thank you all for joining me. Uh, and I am excited to get started with this uh, third session of the Beginner Workshop. Um, if you went to my one <laughs> last night, uh, I think this one I will be a lot more awake. Um, so uh, we will kind of dive right into things. Now, if you're in the Discord, um, and you're following along with this workshop in the Discord, two things to be aware of. Um, one, you need to join the live stream. So next to my uh, next to my icon in the sidebar, you'll see a little thing that says live. Um, hover over that and then click on the picture of my desktop and you'll be able to watch along. Um, if you're on Twitch, you have both the, the voice and the video at the same time, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the other thing is if you are in the Discord, um, in addition to making sure you're watching the, the actual live stream video, um, I have push to talk enabled, so uh, you can't just unmute yourself, but if you, do ha if you go into the Discord settings um, and then voice and video, uh, there's an option for you to uh, enable push to talk. And if you do that, you'll be able to push a button on your keyboard and, and ask questions. And that's just so we don't get lots of uh, background sort of like keyboards clacking and um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you can also post questions in the chat on Twitch or on uh, the beginner workshop text channel on Discord. Um, and I will be going through those as, as we go. Okay, so let us go ahead and dive into it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over my thing to, uh, to the desktop so that you all can see uh, what I'm doing um, on Twitch. So um, you can see my desktop now. So we're going to be talking about how to make our first game. Um, and I'm going to challenge us to try to do it in about 30 minutes. Um, and when I say make a game, I don't just mean a, you know, like if you were to take like a beginner programming class in a high school or something like that, like they would tell you that you're making a game or something, but you would spend 45 minutes trying to just get the character to move. Um, we're actually going to try to make something fun um, by the by the end of this workshop, like something that is probably not the world's best game. You're probably not going to make, you know, a ton of money um, on Steam by selling it. But for 30 minutes, I think we can make something that's at least somewhat enjoyable to play. Um, and I, I think that it'll give you a good starting point for building a project at this code day um, that you can present at the end and be proud of, um, especially if you're if you're working on adding art and music and other things to the game. Um, I think it's a it's a good way to do that. Um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into it. So we're going to be using a, a program called Construct 3. Um, now, Construct 3 runs in your web browser. Uh, mm -hmm. You can actually use it on a desktop PC. You can even use it on a tablet or a phone. Um, you don't need to make an account, but if you do, you'll get some more, um, there, there's sort of some limitations uh, when you don't make an account. And then if you make an account, you get less limitations. And then if you um, pay for it, you get even more. But you, it's, it's free. You don't technically need to make an account. Um, so to open up Construct, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to editor, E-D-I-T-O-R dot construct, C-O-N-S-T-R-U-C-T dot net. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and here we are in the Construct 3 editor. You can see, again, it's saying guests are limited to 25 events. If you create an account, which is free, you can get 50. <clears throat> and that'll be fine for the tutorial, um, so you don't, need to, you don't need to do any of that. Um, someone was asking in the uh, chat on Twitch if we can use Unity for this. Um, so this is a beginner uh, guide. Um, you may have heard of things like Unity or Unreal Engine. Um, which a lot of games use to make really professional looking games. Um, that is true. I think that there's probably a workshop on Unity at Code Day. If not, certainly there are people who can help you out with it. Um, but uh, Unity is a little bit more professional, a little bit more complicated, and it's not really a good thing to try to get a game working really quickly. So that's a good question. We're not going to be using it for this workshop, but it is a, a thing that, that many people use. Okay, so uh, hopefully that gave you some time um, for everyone who is following along that you've opened up your web browser, you've gone to this editor.construct.net and we are ready to get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit new project um, and you, you see the screen pops up. Now, first of all, I just wanna, I'm, I'm gonna give you like some some pro tips, right? Because when we're, we're making games, like we are kind of programming them and, and I, you know, used to be a professional programmer um, and uh, 
And so what I'm going to be doing is, uh, you know, ta talking a little bit about some of the things that I learned when I was learning to program. Um, and one of those things is you can just ignore everything that you don't know what it means. There's oftentimes like there's a lot of words on the screen and there's like lots of if you read technical technical documentation or anything It's like really really long. Um, you don't need to know most of the stuff You can just ignore it if you're not sure what something means just ignore it um, When you need to do something You usually what I would do is I'd google it and then if I can't uh, you know so, someone online will tell me uh, You know, this is the um, you know, this is the way to go about it So um, I'm gonna ignore most of this stuff, but we do need to come up with a name um, another question, so someone was saying, I have experience with Unity, I want to use Unity. Again, you're welcome to use Unity for Code Day. There's no restriction that you have to use Construct 3. If you're not a beginner, um, you're welcome to use Unity. Um, but if you have experience with Unity, you're not a beginner. And so like this probably isn't really the workshop for you. Um, this is the beginner workshop. OK, so um, so back to this, uh, we do have the. Um, you know, we, we, we do have this whole thing. I can ignore most of it, but I, I do need a name. Um, and so the, the first thing that we need to do to, you know, to build this first beginner project is to figure out what we're going to build. Um, now, here's what I like to do for this workshop. And we could pick anything, but here's what I like to do for the beginner workshop. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of uh, a person named Bill Gates, right? The founder of Microsoft, creator of the Windows operating system, uh, billionaire philanthropist trying to eradicate malaria and mosquitoes from the world. Um, th there's this interesting video of him um, from when he was much younger, where he's on a TV interview and they just, he's just like, yeah, I can jump over a chair from a standing position. Um, and they have him do it. So here's the video, and if you don't have sound, I'll explain what happened afterward. Can leap over a chair from a standing position? It depends on the size of the chair. Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes! Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Okay, so that was Bill Gates jumping over a chair, um, and, uh... The, the, so the, the TV anchor is like, is it true you can jump over a chair from a standing position? Bill Gates is like, it depends on the size of the chair. And then he does it in slow motion uh, while they play Damn It Feels Good to Be a Gangster in the background. Um, so that's what we're going to make a game about. I think that's a really funny concept for a game. And personally, I like to make games about things that are funny. Um, so I'm going to name my project Bill Gates Chair Project. Or you can, you can name it whatever you want. You don't have to follow exactly what, you know, exactly if I give something a name, you can name yours a little bit differently. It'll be fine. Okay. So we have created our project, and now we're over here in the screen, and we can see there's a few things going on here. Now there's this left-hand side with all this stuff. Use loader layout, loader style, preload sounds. Um... I'm gonna ignore all that. Remember what I said, like, I just generally, like, it's a it's a good idea if you're not sure what something does, just pretend it doesn't exist. Um, that that will serve you pretty well um, when you're doing things uh, for making your game. I, it, it works totally fine. So we're gonna ignore this left-hand side for now. This middle section, the really big section, is our world map. Um, this is where we're gonna put things, right? We're gonna put our character, we're gonna put um, you know, the, the map, so it could be like a ground or, or a background or things like that. Like this is where everything is, right? This is your, this is your world. And then the right hand side is where we source stuff that exists in the world. So when I say stuff, you know, let's, let's actually get started there. What are some of the things that are going to be in our game? What is the stuff in our game? What are the, you know, the, um, if you're an artist, like what are the things you would need to draw? If you're um, a musician, like what are the things that would need uh, sound effects? You know, like what are the things that are going to be in our game? Um, if anyone has any ideas, feel free to post them in the chat. I'll, I'll wait just a second. Object player. Uh, yes, yeah, so someone posted player in the in the chat. Um, and again, for the, the person in the um, Twitch chat who is talking about Unity, again, this is a beginner workshop. And so if you have more experience, and you kind of know what's going on. 
uh, you're welcome to stay tuned in, but I don't know if this is the workshop for you. Because again, you are welcome to use any um, anything you like. So if you want to use Unity, feel free. I also have a bunch of Smarties. It's not just the uh, the intro video. It is I do actually enjoy candy. Okay, so. So someone in the chat suggested player. Um, I agree with that. I think player is something we're gonna need, right? Our player in this game, I think, I think is gonna be Bill Gates. It could be the chair, right? Maybe we wanna make a game where we play as the chair, but we're gonna make our game where we play as Bill Gates for, for now. You could make your game differently if you wanted. We're gonna add a new object type. Now, again, we get a lot of things here. Another thing I want you to remember um, that'll that'll come in handy when you're making your game in the in the future. Pretty much everything in a game is going to be a sprite. If you're not sure what something is, you can't really go wrong by picking sprite, or at least thinking maybe it's a sprite, because generally most things in a game are going to be a sprite. So I'm going to pick sprite, and we'll give our sprite a name, and I'll pick Bill G. You you can name yours whatever you want. It won't matter for this tutorial. Um, you know, you have the creativity here. Um, I'm naming mine Bill G. So, give it the name, hit insert, and I'm going to click somewhere on the map to place where I want him to be. Our map is empty, so it doesn't really matter where. Cool. And now I get this image editor. Um, so... Some people were asking, what do you press again to create a sprite? So we'll go ahead and go through that process again, just for anyone who missed it. Over on the right hand side, in this thing that says project, we'll go down to where we see object types. And why we call it object types, like, doesn't really matter, but we'll, we'll talk about that again later. So over here in object types, we'll right click add a new object type and we'll choose sprite and then we'll give it a name so again one more time right click on object types add a new object type and we'll choose sprite and then we'll give it a name and then i click somewhere to create the uh the first version of it in the world so we get this image editor over here um this is where we could draw our image we can also load images if you hit the open button it looks like a little file folder you can actually load an image. So if you're like an artist and you want to use Photoshop or something, you can do that, um, and then and then you can import it in here because uh, this is a little bit more primitive than something like Photoshop. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this anyway, and I'll you know I'll pick a, an initial color. Maybe I want my Bill Gates to be like this teal. I don't know why, and I am going to draw my best Bill Gates. And, you know, maybe I'll add some teeth here. I am not the world's best at drawing, and I am especially not the world's best at drawing with a mouse. Um, but I don't think that's too bad. Um, and it's, it's certainly, it's interesting. Um, okay, so this is the Bill Gates that I've created. I'll give you a few seconds to create your Bill Gates as well if you're following along. Um, but one thing to, to keep in mind, when we're done, we're going to want to hit this crop button at the top. Um, the It sort of looks like a square with some of the edges hanging over. Um, one of the things to remember about this is that computers are really dumb and they'll kind of do exactly what we tell them. And so if you notice, there's kind of like, there's a lot of empty space around Bill Gates. Um, and the computer considers all of that to be part of Bill Gates. Uh, it's almost as if he has like an aura around him that no one can touch him. 
um, because he's just surrounded by this invisible protective field. That's not really what I want, so I'm gonna hit crop. And um, it'll get rid of most of it. So I'll give you a minute if you are following along at home to go ahead and create your Bill Gates. Um, maybe I'll make some adjustments in the meantime. What do I have this set up for? 15? Not 15. Cool. So I will go ahead and finish this up. There's my Bill Gates. When I'm done, I'm just going to go ahead and X out of this sort of window inside of here, this animations editor. I'm going to hit this X up here. And we're done. And we got our Bill Gates. <clears throat> now, I'm, I can resize him. I can put him wherever I want on the, on the canvas. Um, what are the other things that we need in our game? Well, we also need a chair, right? So I'm going to right click over here again on object types. I'm going to add a new object type. Everything in a game is a sprite. So I'm going to go down to sprite and I will type in chair. I'll insert that as well, put it in our, our game somewhere. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw my chair. Well, I'll give it a different color. Uh, it's not great. Let's let's uh, try that again. There we go. Okay, that's my chair. Again, I'm going to go ahead and hit this crop button, crop transparent edges, and you can see it removes all of that transparent area around our chair so that the computer will know that we're just talking about this chair itself. And I can resize that as well. Okay. So we now have our game. I can go ahead and hit this play button up here to run it. And we'll see, well, uh, there's nothing really happens, right? Like it's not, not really much of a game yet. That's okay. All of this was set up. This is all the prelude to moving pretty quickly to make this into an actual fun game. Okay, so another thing you need to remember about uh, people who are making things on the computer, like programmers or, or game makers or whoever, um, generally we're pretty lazy. Um, and I think that that's a good thing. You know, don't do work if you don't have to. Uh, not what school would say necessarily, but like I think that that's generally pretty good. So what we've done is, a lot of us have created a way for um, for us to use, to, to sort of reuse things, right? To, to, to take things that already exist and, and like reuse them across different games. So things that are really common in games, um, like you would see, uh, for example, many games have a, if they're a 3D game, they have the ability to like move your character around. They have the ability for you to um, have the, when you move the mouse, it sort of turns your head, right? When you hit the arrow keys, it moves your, your player around. Um, there are other things that are pretty common in games too, like the ability to collide with things is pretty common. Um, so we just have a lot of options there. Those are all things that are really common to games. And even in professional games, um, even if you're making like a a triple A title, hundreds of millions of dollars in budget, there's actually nowadays, there's a really good chance that you're not going to be writing your own physics, as an example. The ability to collide with things, the ability for things to fall down due to gravity, in most professional games, you don't end up re-implementing that because it's so common across all things. Now, if you're making something weird like Portal, maybe you have to, but most games don't. Same is true for us. Um, and Construct has a lot of these things built in. So to get to those things, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to this right-hand side, the object types, um, and I'm gonna right-click, or two-finger click if you're on a Mac, um, on Bill Gates, and click on Edit Behaviors. 
So again, over here on this right-hand side, I'm gonna right-click on our Bill Gates and hit Edit Behaviors, and then I'm gonna add a new behavior. You can scroll down here and, and take a look and see sort of what the things are that are out there. Um, I don't know what some of these do, to be honest. Um, if you click on them, they have like help text. Uh, pin, it looks like, is one of them, for example, wrap. Um, I don't I don't a hundred percent know what all of these do, but I do know that we want a platform game and, and right over here There's a section called movements and there's a, a movement called platform So I'm gonna add that behavior to our Bill Gates And now if I go ahead and run this you'll see we will have something that is starting to look like a game Okay, so our Bill Gates falls immediately but it is you know, something's happening there. Like, it's it's better than nothing. Now, why did he fall immediately? Well, there's no ground, right? And again, computers are really dumb. And if we don't add some ground, it's not going to know that Bill Gates needs to stand on it. So I'm going to add a new object type, because almost everything in the game is going to be a sprite. I'm going to pick sprite, and I'll call it ground. And now I will go ahead and... Now, you could just draw some ground, right? If I'm going to make a platforming game, I could just draw this ground. The other thing I can do, though, is I can just use the paint bucket tool to fill in the entire block. And then I can just resize the block. That makes sense? And by the way, if I want to edit this again, like let's say I don't want this to be blue, I want this to be a different color, I can just double click. Um, instead of right clicking, you double click to reopen this, and, you know, and then I can change the, uh, the color. So now we got green. Okay. Okay, you ready to rerun our game? Let us try it out. I'm going to hit play. And, well, okay, so he falls through the ground. Um, not exactly what we were expecting. But, again, computers are really dumb. And what's happening is that it doesn't know that the ground is supposed to be solid. It figures it might be solid, it might be a background, it might be, you know, something else that, that should be somewhere. So, like, rather than, you know, try to assume anything, it's just going to assume that it should do nothing different than it would normally, which is to say absolutely nothing happens. To tell the ground that it's solid, again, things being solid is a pretty common thing. Um, and so what we can do is we can right-click, edit behaviors, add new behavior, and you can see we have solid. We also have, by the way, we have jump through. So if you've ever had those games where there's platforms where you can jump through the bottom and then you land on them, that's what jump through means. But we'll pick solid, hit enter, and go ahead and close out of that. Now, if I run our game, okay. Here we go, we got our game. Now, is this the world's best game yet? No. Um, for one, there's no losing condition. So I can actually touch the chair uh, with uh, total impunity, like nothing happens because it is, you know, we haven't told the computer to do anything and it's not going to do anything. Um, but we do have something that's starting to look like a game. And you can imagine that if I were, you know, a better artist, like this would potentially look more exciting. Or at, at least if I was a better sort of speed artist, I'm sure I could do better with, with time. Okay. Now... How many people here think that um, when when player character touches a chair, restart the level is a common thing in a game? Like, it's not super common, right? Like, it, it you can imagine that games would use things kind of like it, but it's not so common as to have its own behavior. Um, and you saw that the list of behaviors really wasn't that big to begin with. Over here, we have a thing called event sheet. Now you can see there's layout one and there's event sheet one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on event sheet one and we get this totally different looking view. This is where we add logic to our game that's a little bit more complicated than just the basic stuff that all games have like platforming games. So platforming is a behavior. It's a really common thing that all games have. We want something that's going to be a little bit more specific to our game. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hit Add Event. And we can see that there's all these things here. Now, what is an event? 
Well, an event is like a thing that we're watching for, right? Like when you think about it, um, you know, you, you might tell a, a friend if you were giving them instructions on how to get, get somewhere, you might say, you know, when you get to this street, make a left. An event is the when you get to this street, right? Um, or a teacher, you, you know, if you're in a high school or something like that, might say when you're, you know, when you're done with your, your work, let me know, right? When you're done with your work is the event. It's the thing that we're kind of watching out for and we want our game to watch out for. And then the action, which we'll, we'll get to adding in a second, is the thing that you do when that happens. So if this happens, then do that. Um, now, what do we want to happen? Well, we want to know when Bill Gates touches the chair. So we click Add Event, and we have four, four options here. What are, the, what are the things we're going to choose from? Well, it's probably not in ground, right? But when Bill Gates touches a chair, well, we could say when the chair touches Bill Gates. We could say when Bill Gates touches the chair. Which one do we pick? Maybe it's in System because it involves two things. I don't know. This is another thing to keep in mind with making games and, and like programming, um, is that we don't necessarily know what to do a lot of the time, and we just have to kind of figure it out. Um, and I think this is true in many things. If you have any hobbies um, that you're already really good at, there's probably things where you realize like you don't actually know how to do something, and so you just kind of start somewhere, right? If you're an artist, maybe like you probably if you're making a drawing or something you need to start somewhere right like you need to you have a completely blank piece of paper and you just pick somewhere to start and you hope that it's a good starting point potentially right and and oftentimes it is because if you're good at something like you've just gotten that experience to, to know where to start um but if you're new to something you have no idea where to start and that, that's where we're at right now right so we could just pick one and if, let's say i picked system and we we look through it and we don't see you know, we don't see something that says like when one object is touching another object. So, you know, nothing there is, is good. And we just hit go back, right? If it doesn't do what we want, no problem. Um, we just go back. It doesn't mean anything bad has happened. Um, it doesn't mean we're, we're terrible at making games. Um, it just means that the thing that we picked initially didn't work. And, and that's pretty common, even for me as someone who's been programming for probably 15 years. Um, it's pretty common that what I try first doesn't work, and maybe even what I try third doesn't work. But in this case, uh, you know, let's just go ahead and we can pick Bill Gates or we can pick chair. Bill Gates touching the chair is the same as the chair touching Bill Gates, I, I think, according to physics. So it doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick Bill Gates. And you can see Construct actually highlights really common things, uh, which is, is pretty nice. So on collision with another object is a, is a pretty common one. And I'm going to go ahead and hit choose and I'll choose chair. So now we've got our event. When Bill Gates mm -hmm. on collision with chair, what do we want to do when that happens? Well, we want to add an action and we want to restart the game. Um, now, where would restart the game be? Well, it maybe it's in Bill Gates, right? Because he's the player. So we could go in there and, and we could take a look and, you know, we don't see anything. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back. Probably, if it wasn't in Bill Gates, probably not in chair, certainly not in ground. So it must just be by process of elimination, like it's probably in system, right? Like if you've ever taken a test and you're like, well, I don't know what the answer to this is, but I know that it's not B, C, or D, so it's got to be A. Um, that's kind of what we've done here. It's it's probably in here. Um, luckily, if you get it wrong, you can always just go back and, you know, you're not actually losing points or anything. And the other thing is we can try uh, searching. So I'm going to search for restart, and we see restart. Layout, well, we were in layout one, so restart layout sounds right to me. Okay, so we will go back to our main um, main game and then hit play. And we have our game. We can still jump over the chair, but if I miss, you can see the game actually restarts. Okay, so... It has been 28 minutes, and we have a thing that is starting to look like a game. There's a lose condition. There's a win condition. Let's start to make this a little bit harder, um, and then we can start making it more complicated. Now, remember how this right-hand side is called object types? It's not called, um, you know, it's, it's not that we create something in the real world. We create it over here in object types. Well, why is that? It's because this object types folder is kind of like a factory, right? And when you're making something in a factory, you have like a mold. And it makes a bunch of copies of that thing. 
right? Like you, you get a bunch of different individual, uh, we, we call instances of something that we made. So um, what I can do is go ahead and drag out another copy of ground and I get another version of our ground. And, and I can resize it and I can move it around however <laughs> I want, but it'll still behave just like our other ground where it, you know, it's continuing to be um, a solid. The same is true for chairs. So I can actually take another chair and I can go over here to where it says object types, which is like our factory of objects. And I can drag it out and I can put it wherever I want. I, you know, put it right here. Now, if I run our game, now we have two chairs. And if I touch either chair, the game restarts and I can stand on both pieces of ground. Now we can't scroll yet, but there, there's a way to do that um, so that we could make a more complicated platforming game. Um, and again, you can kind of play around with this. The other thing that you can do is, you know, it, another thing that's really common with programmers is, is just Google search something. So if I want to know construct three, how to scroll follow character. Um, how to make the camera follow the player in construct three. Um, this one is not actually very helpful. Uh, oh, I see, this is smooth following camera. So we can try a few different answers. And it, like basically what we would come up with after searching for a while is if you right click on Bill Gates and hit edit behaviors, add another behavior, and there's a thing called scroll to. And we can add that. And now when we start our game, you can see that we can now move around in our world. And so I could start to make a fairly complicated platforming game, right? I could, let's zoom out a little bit. Um, let's say I wanted to start, start down here, you know, and make this platform a little bit smaller, add this one here, add another chair. And this is now the Bill Gates, you know, like a chair adventure or something. I think I can even rotate, right? So I could make like a, I don't know what this will do. Like, well, you know, we'll just have to kind of see what happens when we rotate. We'll add this over here. You know, let's, uh, let's try it. Oh, may not be possible to make it over this chair. Oh, there we go. Okay, I got it. And I made it to the top. Okay, so not the you know not the world's most complicated game, but it's been 32 minutes and it's starting to look like a game. And and now you can probably start to imagine, oh well, what if I added, um, you know, what if I added, like, m music and cool art and like a nice background and maybe some some enemies and things like that. And you're starting to get a game. And what if we wanted to do something a little bit more creative and weird and and unusual? Well, let's start adding some some other things that we can do in this event sheet. So I'm just gonna kind of play around with this and we'll say, okay, what if we wanted to add um, more chairs? So maybe we want it to just be, you're trying to get to the top of this platform, but it's it's raining chairs. Now, if we wanna make more chairs, you might assume that it would be in the chair section. Um, and there is a thing in here called, oh, oh. Well, actually, sorry, we're talking about events first. So when do we want to create our chair? Like, what do we want to trigger the creation of a chair? Um, we probably want this to happen every so often, like after a certain number of seconds. And so number of second, when a certain number of seconds happens, it kind of makes most sense for it to be in system. Um, and if we go down to the bottom, we can see every X seconds. So we'll pick a number one. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add an action. So what do we want to have happen? Well, we wanna create a chair. And so going to chair, there is a thing called spawn another object, but what that ends up doing is it creates another object at exactly the same point as the previous one. Um, and I know this just because I've tried it before and it like doesn't look like anything's happening. So instead what we'll, we'll check out, if it's not in chair, it might be in system. And then we see create object. 
and we want to create a chair. Where do we want to create it? Uh, X is the left right direction and Y is the up down direction. So Y equals zero, I think is at the very top of the screen. Um, X, we, maybe we want it to be raining down in a, in a bunch of different places, right? We don't just want it to be a, a solid stream in one location. Um, maybe we want it to be in lots of different locations. Um, so if we wanted to pick a random location, what we can do is we can actually go in here and click Find Expressions. Click on System because that's, you know, if we're looking for a random number, it's probably not in chair. It's, it's probably not, the chair is not generating a random number. So we'll check System. We'll look down here. Take a look through here. We'll see what we can find. Um, I don't actually see it. It should be in here. Yeah, random. Here we go. Another way to do this, by the way, again, is to, to search for like construct three random number. And you can see people say it's, you know, it's called random and you give it the two numbers that you want. So I'm going to double click on this anyway. Random. And we will say between zero and comma um, and let's say 500. I don't know if those are the right numbers. If it doesn't work out, we'll come back, we'll change it. So I'll hit done. And now there's one more thing that we want is we want the chairs to fall, right? Now again, falling is probably a pretty common behavior in games. So rather than having to add all of that ourselves, what we can do is we can right click on the chair. We can click edit behaviors, add a new behavior. And we'll see in here that there's something called physics, which basically means like gravity acts on this. So we'll choose that as well. I can delete these built-in chairs anyway because they're not, they're not actually relevant. So I'll hit start. And I believe we should start seeing some chairs, although there, there we go. Okay, so our chairs are coming, you know, they're, they're generally around the same area, so maybe that means our random was not uh, very good. Oh, you know what? I think I put the random in Y instead of X, maybe? No, that looks right. Well, we'll just try a bigger number. And then maybe we want them to fall more frequently, so we'll try every 0 0.2 seconds. So five times as fast. There we go. Okay, so now we get some chairs. This game is actually starting to be a little bit difficult, uh, if it's even possible at all. Maybe 0 0.2 is a little bit fast. You know, maybe we want to go a little bit slower, 0 0.5. There we go. Oh boy, this is not an easy game to win. Okay, and then and there we go. And now I made it to the to the end. So we've now made a game that's like actually starting to get a little bit more complicated. Now again, shares probably not the most exciting, you know, uh, game. This is a little bit silly, but you can imagine, you know, this is like a really dramatic scene where you're climbing a mountain and there's rocks falling, right? Like now we've made an actual game. That would be a thing that you would see in a real game, um, which is pretty cool. What are some other things that we can do? And and you don't need to know any of these particular things, right? Part of this is trying to figure out how to do what you want it to do. Um, all of the things that we're covering in this workshop are just ideas for things that we could do to kind of show you the process for figuring this out. But a lot of this is gonna be about experimentation and about trying to make it do the things that you want it to do. Um, so if I wanted to, you know, let, let's, let's pick something else that we could do. So let's get rid of our chair spawning system. We'll just go ahead and delete this entire, uh, this entire thing. Um, so I'll hit delete. Um, we can even delete our chair checking. We'll just get rid of chairs entirely. Um, what if I just say every 0 0.5, or let's do every tick, which is as fast as possible. And then we'll just say we want to spawn a new Bill Gates. And it's going to be at random 0, point, uh, 0 comma 1,000 and random... 0, 1,000. They'll spawn at random locations. We'll choose Bill Gates. Hit done. 
We'll go ahead and delete our platforms as well. In fact, we can delete everything. Well, let's go ahead and hit start. <laughs> and that's what we've made. So I don't know what this is. Uh, call it interactive art, call it whatever you want. Um, but that is gonna do it for this, this workshop. Um, I hope that this has given you some of the tools that you need to go out and get started with making a game. Um, again, we're not, you know, we're not teaching you absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about how to make a game, because um, there are so many different ways to make a game. Um, there are so many different things that you could do. There are so many different mechanics that you could add. Um, we've seen beginners make things as complicated as a game where you collect puzzle pieces and each puzzle piece is a piece of the room map and you can actually slide the rooms around. That was made in Construct by a team of beginners. Um, we had some beginners who had made a game over a weekend where you could uh, go back in time each level and if you shot a character in one level they would get sent back in time because you shot them with a time gun and they would be there in the next level so the more things you shot the more difficult the levels became. Um, that was actually a really cool game as well that was also made by beginners. This is slowing down my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. But, um, <clears throat> you know, there are a lot of options for, for things that you can make with this. Um, the most important thing is uh, just to start, um, you know, start somewhere, start simple, try adding more things to your game as you get things done. Don't, you know, don't start by trying to implement everything. Go step by step like we were doing in this workshop. Um, you've learned how to create the object types. You've learned how to drag them over. Um, you've learned how to um, create those events so that you can do more complicated things. Um, and that's really all you need to build a project by the end of Code Day. So um, that, that is going to do it for us in this workshop. But if you have any questions, um, feel free to post them in the chat right now. Um, and I will stick around for a little bit to answer them. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you have any questions, you're, you get started working on your game. Um, first of all, make sure that you've created a, a project um, if you're participating in Code Day on uh, Showcase so that you get assigned a mentor. Um, and you can ask mm -hmm. that mentor. Um, but then you can also uh, go ahead and um, ask in help desk if you need any help as well and you can't figure it out. So lots of ways to get help um, throughout the, the event as you're working on your games or your apps at Code Day. Um, you know, leading toward the judging on Sunday. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them. I will stick around for another minute and, uh, mm -hmm. and be here to answer them. Okay, so it looks like people are leaving, so I will go ahead and call it there. Um, thank you all so much, um, and uh, enjoy the rest of your code day.